This is a quick video about how to install Emacs and how to install SML within Emacs. And uh, so if you have never used Emacs, hopefully this will get you started. Um, I'm going to assume that you want to use one of what we call the Emacs distributions. Uh, this is this will be an Emacs that is pre-configured with a lot of uh, very useful packages, so you don't have to do uh, to do, to install each one of them individually. It enhances the power of Emacs significantly and um, bare bones Emacs, and um, which I can show here, um, is relatively simplistic and um, there's it's powerful, but um, can be uh, way better and uh, uh, for example I cannot even actually uh, quickly change oh yeah I can change the size of the font if I just remember exactly which keys um, they are and um, so um, you can do a lot with uh, with Emacs just bare bones with nothing else installed but I think that the experience gets enhanced um, there are several distributions and uh, the one that I prefer is called uh, Prelude so if I search for Prelude and Emacs, I get into the GitHub page of Prelude. And uh, and here there are instructions to install it. Um, let me go back to the terminal. I don't have an Emacs, uh, .d, uh, well, uh, I have an Emacs.d directory. Yes, it actually was created, but it is completely um, empty. There's nothing in it. And um, as you can see, there's no uh, file and there is no Emacs. Um, uh, EL uh, in this directory either. Okay, so there's nothing in my configuration at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to install uh, Prelude and uh, and it's relatively straightforward. All we have to do is just um, install it with this command. Um, this works with Mac OS and Linux. Windows users will have to do something slightly different. And, uh, and of course, um, okay, so there it goes. If you're worried about running a command from a GitHub repository, which in a way you should, uh, you can always uh, clone the repository and put the files uh, where they belong. But uh, this is relatively straightforward. So now I have a directory called uh, emacs.d and uh, Prelude has downloaded a lot of files. Okay, It's still not ready. And um, let's run Emacs. Uh, we don't have to run it from here. Let's run it from here. Um, there is a command option that is very useful called minus minus debug init, which will allow you to see um, a source of errors. So if for some reason your init does not work, uh, this will be a way to uh, debug it. So let's run it. The first time it will start downloading some of the packages and installing them inside your .emacs.d directory. As you can see now, um, it is saying uh, compiling, downloading, compiling, downloading, downloading. So it's it's going through the repositories, downloading um, files, and um, and it will take a little bit of time, and uh, not too much, but um, uh, it's something that has to be done uh, once. Okay. Uh, so uh, let it continue. Uh, hopefully there will be no war uh, no errors. Uh, we have some warnings, so that's actually perfectly fine. And um, so. Um, as you can see, we have some warnings. My recommendation is uh, exit Emacs, control X, control C, and then um, run it again. And uh, so the second time, it should be relatively fast, as you can see. Uh, one of the nice things about Emacs, uh, so this distribution is that uh, if you press a key, like control C, you will get a little bit of a help in terms of commands. This enhances the experience um, way, way better. You can also change uh, the configuration of um, of Emacs, the colors, etc. Uh, in fact, um, in the directory of Emacs, there is a file called Prelude uh, Cheat Sheet uh, PDF. So you can actually um, open that file and print this. Um, this will actually tell you everything that you want to know about the main uh, commands. It's unbelievable the number of commands. Uh, one of the nice things that I really like about Emacs, and let me go back to Emacs. Um, oh, I close it. So let me run it again. <clears throat> and let me actually uh, make it uh, full screen and let's make the text a little bit better. So I can also type um, escape X and, uh, and that will allow me to uh, type a command by name. So every command has a name. So let's say that I want to open file, but I don't remember how to open file. So I can type open and um, and you can see that it starts to narrow uh, the options. It's a little bit small, but you can, you hopefully can see it. Uh, open actually doesn't work. So let's do file. 
and uh, file visit I think it's called uh, was visit file uh, visit uh, I don't even remember what the name of the command is um, let's do the following so LX and then uh, describe a key I can also describe what a key does um, control X control F and it tells me that um, it's actually a console find file so um, whenever I want to try to open a file is uh, the command is console find file which I can call with control X control F or I can say escape X uh, or uh, tab X and then type the name uh, console and uh, find file and uh, it's the second option here and it will be the same so um, if you don't remember the keys for a command you can always use the name of the command it's actually quite useful when you're uh, learning okay so now we have Emacs and uh, but Emacs doesn't know anything about SML yet because SML is kind of an obscure language from the point of view of uh, most developers so we need to install it um, I have created a file that you can download from uh, Brightspace I will put it there and um, so Prelude has a folder called personal that's where you're supposed to put uh, any of your uh, configuration and uh, so in here we're actually going to put this file which I call cse370.el okay so that's all we're going to do and uh, put it here but we have to actually tell um, uh, Emacs to actually use this file so we're going to um, Open it again. Um, notice actually the command line I'm running, minus NW minus Q. It says, don't do any configuration, don't do anything, just run it fast. I know what I'm doing. It's kind of like using VI. And then we're going to modify the file.initdl. You can do this in other editors um, if you're just starting. And this runs the command um, within the terminal. So instead of having the nice user interface, I'm actually running um, in here. And it didn't do any kind of um, configuration. So uh, what I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to say require uh, CSC three seventy. That's all I'm going to do. That's all that you have to add at the very end. So it notes that it has to load it, and then uh, we're going to actually run uh, Emacs again. You can look at the documentation uh, so uh, we have some compilation warnings so uh, they are actually warnings because uh, I ask it to install some packages in that file and uh, let me actually open the file so you can see uh, what is what I did and uh, so um, personal let's make this bigger uh, this is the file we just created and this is what it has so um, um, the first uh, five lines are just an easy way to install packages. Then um, this is a hook, and uh, this will actually become obvious when we start going into Racket what exactly um, the syntax of, of, of this, because um, if you know Racket, you will be able to understand um, uh, Lisp. Um, this is the package that we installed. This is the one that knows about SML, and, um, and we're just saying, um, install this package but not only that but every time that you have a file with extension .sml run this snippet of code and in this snippet of code I'm basically just setting some uh, um, variables like uh, the level of indentation I don't like uh, tabs in my source code files so I'm removing those tabs and replacing them with uh, with the spaces so um, you can remove this if you want and um, this is just um, an example of how to do that kind of configuration and um, so let's quit now. Uh, let's run it again. <clears throat> we should have no warnings, so that's good. And um, and now um, let's load a file. So let's call it uh, rip.sml. So let's load an SML file. I already have some information here. Um, sorry, a small program. And um, and then um, notice that now we have an option called SML. It's a little bit small um, in here, and uh, but it's a, a, an option. And then the first one we can say uh, process, and we can have uh, where is it? Uh, is it in uh, process? Send file, the second one. If I click on it, it will ask me at the bottom. You can actually see at the very bottom is saying uh, command and, 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 it, and it includes SML. If you type return, 
it will run SML and it will send um, that that file uh, there. And uh, so that's a very easy way that you can um, do very quick uh, testing of, of your code, okay? And um, so this should actually get you enough to get started. Um, you can go to the documentation or prelude and then read how to change the color, how to change the font size. Um, I didn't do it here and it looks a little bit small, but uh, if you press Control plus, sorry, Control shift uh, plus and minus, um, let me actually do it in this, and uh, con uh, Control minus makes it smaller, Control uh, plus makes it bigger, okay? And then uh, you can start uh, learning how to actually use the commands, okay? Um, hopefully this will make your life a little bit easier and um, and if you have any questions, just post them in the um, forum, okay?